In this Photoshop tutorial, you're going to learn how to turn your regular photos into this cool, colorful heat map effect using gradients and some other effects. So to begin, we're going to start with our original photo. So I'll just delete all of these layers I've done. And what I'll do is I'll turn my photo into a smart object layer. So I'll right click, convert to smart object so that now when I add effects onto this, I can always go back and, and edit the effects later. So for example, if I go to filter, blur, and I do something like a radial blur, when I press OK, I should see, because this is a smart object, this smart filters layer appear. And now I can always turn the visibility of the radial blur on and off. Or if I went too far or too little, I can always just double click on the effect and re-edit the parameters of the effect again. So we have this radial blur effect going on right now which is going to help smooth things out, but we'll go back and tweak after. The next thing we want to do is actually add a new gradient map layer. So I'll go to layer, new adjustment layer, gradient map. So just like how we did smart filters, putting this on a new adjustment layer rather than directly on the clip just allows us some flexibility if we ever want to change things. Because this is a smart object, Technically, you could just go to Image, Adjustments, Gradient Map, and you'd still have the ability to adjust it in the Smart Filters. So I guess it's just a matter of taste if you're working with multiple layers or not. So if we highlight our Gradient Map layer in the Properties window, and if you don't see any of these windows, you can go to Window and make sure you see them, check them on or not. I can click on the gradient, and I can actually edit it to be whatever I want. So we have our gradient stops here. We have this little diamond in the middle, which shows how far one way or the other to lean. So what I'm going to do is start with a, a black to white. And I'll actually create like two little gradients here. So I'm going to do black on both edges and then one color here and one color here and then black in the middle. So we've got these two like separate bands of light. And within these, I'm going to add two points on each side. So two points on each side. And then I'm going to just change these to be whatever colors I want. So I can actually play around and see what looks good. So maybe we'll do like blues over here. And then maybe we'll do like oranges over here. So don't overcomplicate it and try to just follow me step by step. You see the basic idea of what I've done here is create two bands of light. Right now they've got this white in the middle. Technically this could be any color. So I can make it like a bright yellow or bright blue for this section. And the other thing to keep in mind is the position of how spaced apart your gradient is or not. You'll notice the lines and the edges like if I pull the other black line really close to the dark blue it chokes off the edge a lot more and creates a much stronger edge so if you want more sharp lines and more contrast you can think about how closely you pull these diamonds together if you want more soft and smooth transitions between the colors you can pull the colors one way or the other so you can see how pushing them closer to the other edges and bounds can change things. And this is where I would recommend you spend some time, play around with the adjustments of yours, and try to find something that looks cool for your photo. And also, this is just a starting point that I've laid out. You can try different ideas as well. Like, what if I did one more complication in the middle here? with a red color. You know, it's up to you to experiment with your gradient and find something that you think looks cool. I just think this is a good starting point with these two colors. You can also save these gradients if you want. Like you can create custom gradients. I can save that as blue orange light and that'll save my own custom gradient. Uh, they also have a lot of preset ones in Photoshop if you want to see what those look like. But these are not necessarily like a heat map effect at this point. It's more something else. And there's also noise type gradients. So these are 
also uh, a little different because there's so many bands of noise and they're a little bit more randomized, but I guess these could be a cool experiment as well. But I'll go back to the one that I created and I'll press OK for now. And then what I was trying to demonstrate earlier is that now that we have our gradient map, we can go back to the original layer and we can adjust the blur. So if you notice without the blur, it looks, I guess it looks interesting. It's up to your taste, but it's a bit too sharp. The, what the blur does is sort of blends all those strong edges together into this cool heat map style effect. And I've just happened to use a radial blur, but you can use other types of blurs or effects. So here's just a normal Gaussian blur, just an overall blur that looks kind of cool. Here's a motion blur. So this can look interesting. So it's really up to you to decide what you think looks cool. And even within the radio blur, you can do the zoom or spin method. So there's a, a few different ideas there. Or you can combine things even if you want. All of these smart filters and gradient maps come with the layer mask option. So whatever is white on the layer mask shows through and whatever we paint black on the layer mask reveals what's underneath again. So if I was to add a gradient on the layer mask, just a black to white gradient, you can actually transition from the effect to not the effect. And likewise, if I was to add a gradient on the filters, you can transition from blurred to not blurred on some portion. So this can also be another interesting advanced tip for you. If you ever want to disable the layer mask, you can right click disable it or enable it. So another cool idea for you. But my name is Justin Odisho. If you enjoyed this video, you can check out hundreds of more in the playlist on my channel, which pique your interest and subscribe to stay tuned for all of my future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.